and gentlemen, welcome to an uh, epic, epic live stream here in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. This is going to be huge. Today is going to be huge, and I'm going to get straight into it because, you know, uh, one of the things that I continue to learn is that I should always get you to let me know if it's working. So please let me know in the comments, is this working? Can you see me and hear me? Let me know which country you are from to let me know that it's working. How good is this funk music? I feel like I'm in an episode of Starsky and Hutch. Was it Ben Stiller and uh, the other guy in the film? Pfft, unbelievable stuff. Anyway, uh, let's dive in. Now, here, here's, here's what I want to, first off, I want to share something a big insight that you can all steal from me, okay? Uh, full transparency. We have been ramping up these live streams again here in the Facebook group, and the first couple of weeks went really well, right? Uh, hey, Nicole Graham is here from Australia, living in Washington State, USA. There we go. Sam Carlson, we got you, buddy. Hey, dude, thanks for joining in. Michael Spratt is here. Max Jeffcott is here. Anna Booth is here. Um, so we've been going live in the group here every week and full transparency, the first couple of weeks went really well. And then, you know, it's kind of like engagement started to drop off a little bit and I've been getting pissed off because I'm like, the, the post that we put in this group to promote the live stream gets 1,200 views, right? Post reach of 1,200, right? Which is pretty good for a group this size. It's about, you know, just under 10% reach, right? Uh, completely organic. When we go live, we get like 150 post reach, right? Which is terrible. Uh, so I, I was like, hang on a second. I'm just streaming with Ecamm, Sam. Ecamm as a webcam straight into the Facebook group. Uh, so I'm like, hang on a second. How do we get more people to turn up to these live streams? Because I know that these live streams are incredibly valuable. So how do we get more people to turn up and how do we get more people to engage in these live streams so that they can learn and so that they can improve every part of their agency, right? And well, Jamie Walker, the US and Australia really is the primary audience. So, you know, um, <clears throat> we've got 14,000 people in this group, 150 tuning in, or not even tuning in, but the replay, like 150 reach is just bullshit. Anyway, so I, I went back to, because what happens is when you're not getting, and, and listen, you guys are agency owners. I'm talking to you now as a marketer, right? If you're an agency owner, or a software owner, or a coach, or a consultant, I'm now talking to you as a marketer. When you are frustrated by the lack of engagement that you are getting, it's very easy to blame the platform. It's very easy for us to say, oh, well, I had this conversation with Max a few days ago. Well, Facebook's just not pushing live videos as much as they used to. So what are you gonna do? Maybe we don't even bother going live anymore. Very easy to, very easy to blame the, the platform, right? Yep, exactly. Notifications have stopped, right? Notifications for live streams have stopped and Facebook have been open about, well, actually they haven't, but Facebook haven't denied this, right? They're just not pushing live video as much as they used to. Primarily live video in groups. They don't want you in groups. You might notice while you're hanging out here in our Facebook group, there are no ads, right? So think about this for a second. There are no ads. What's Facebook's business model? Mm, ad revenue. They don't want you spending 25, 30 minutes in a Facebook group with Uncle Troy because you're not looking at their ads. There's no chance if you're clicking, they're not making money. That's why they're not pushing live streams in groups. So it's very easy to blame the platform. But I said, no, 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 no. That's an excuse. It's very easy for salespeople to go, well, you know, it's Easter. Things are quiet. It's summer. Things are quiet. We're in a recession. Things are quiet. You know, everyone's too busy watching Ray Gun on YouTube. Things are quiet. It's all bullshit. Let me tell you something. If you've got an offer that people want, if you offer people something they want, they will turn up. So I'm just going to go to the Digital Mavericks Facebook group here for a second. All right. And I'm going to have a look at the post that I put in the group a couple of days ago. And the post was an ad for this live stream, right? 
and uh, you know, it had the thumbnail of the ad, and it had uh, you know a bit of information about what we're going to talk about, and then it had something like you know, leave a comment below uh, and reach out to Natalie Vlack, and she'll get you the details. Right now, I can't even find it in the group now because you know that's how messed up Facebook groups are. Anyway, something ridiculous like there's been over a hundred comments on that. Uh, on that post, right, of people saying, yes, I want the information on that uh, that live stream. Now, why is that? Come on, you're a smart bunch of people. Why is it that over 100 people have reached out and want the information on this particular live stream? Why is it? Oh, let me have a guess, because I use the word AI in the title. And in fact, this live stream is about using AI. Hmm, I wonder what we can learn from this, ladies and gentlemen. I wonder if as an agency owner or a consultant or a coach or a plumber, if you're watching this, I think you're a bit lost, you're probably in the wrong group, but anyway, welcome. I hope you're having a nice time and you should probably get back to tightening the screws so the water doesn't leak. This is a group for web design, SEO and digital marketing agency owners. I'm glad you stopped by. I wonder what we can learn as agency owners. I think the thing that we can learn here is that if you are not talking to your clients about AI, artificial intelligence, the robots taking over the world, then you are missing a massive opportunity. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm this guru that can help you start an AI agency and grow it to a million dollars a month. There's plenty of dickheads on the internet doing that, and that's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is if you are an agency owner and you currently have clients and you are not having a conversation with them about AI, then you're missing a massive opportunity and you are doing them and yourself a massive disservice. And I've proven that argument by promoting this live stream as being about AI and it is by far and away the most popular live stream we've done in this group in recent history. So having said all of that, let's dive in because what I wanna do now is I wanna talk a little bit about growth plans and how you build growth plans using AI. Jamie Walker says, I've heard using the term AI and products has shown to decrease the CRO. Well, there we go. For me, it wasn't the AI, but the suggestion of opening up new revenue streams that I haven't considered. Woo -hoo, there we go. So let me talk about growth plans for a second, and then I'm going to talk to, oh, then I'm actually gonna share my screen, and I'm gonna show you how to use good old chat GPT to build a custom growth plan for a client in a couple of minutes, right? And, and potentially write yourself a work order or a statement of work for the next 12, 18 months, three years with a client. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it, right? Now, first of all, let's talk about what a growth plan is and let's talk about why growth plans are important and why you should be rolling out growth plans to all of your existing clients and any new prospects that you're talking about, okay? So let's have this conversation right now. The, the holy grail of all business models is recurring revenue. That Now, when I say recurring revenue, I'm not talking about repeat business. I'm not talking about reoccurring revenue. There is a difference between reoccurring revenue and recurring revenue. Reoccurring revenue is revenue that keeps happening from a client coming back and buying another thing. Repeat business. They buy a website, then they need some SEO, then they need an email marketing template put together, then they need some automations built. They keep coming back and saying, oh, can you do this for us? And can you run this for us? And can you do this for us, right? That's repeat business. And that's great because we've got a client now that we've spent time or money to acquire, right? If you're in the business of running ads to promote your services, you've spent money to acquire that client. If you're in the business of doing organic content marketing or networking or uh, promoting yourself online or doing outreach via LinkedIn or email or whatever, then you've still put some time and effort into acquiring that client and that time and effort cost you money. Okay, so whatever your, whatever your chosen uh, channel and medium is for acquiring a client, it's costing you money. Even if it's costing you just your time, time equals money, okay? So now that we have that client, if, that, if we do a good job and that client comes back and buys another thing, yay, you be. We haven't had to acquire that client again. They're just now buying other things from us. That's called repeat business, right? And that's the fundamental staple of what it takes to build 
a product or service-based business. You do a good job, they come back and buy another thing. Excellent, repeat business. They might also refer their friends. That's fantastic, right? That is uh, one of the R's in the pirate metrics. If you're not familiar with the pirate metrics, A-A-R-R-R, sounds like this, R. That's why they call it the pirate metrics. And it really came out of the growth hacking software world back in the day when Sean Ellis was growth hacking the Dropbox story. And uh, R, the R pirate metrics mean acquisition. In other words, how do we acquire a user or a client for our software or our services? Activation, how do we get them to use the thing? Right? How do we get them to engage? And if you're an agency, that's how do we get them to turn up with their onboarding call because now they're activated as a client. Revenue, how do we get more money out of them, particularly in the software world when you might be running free trials? How do we get them to convert to a, a revenue client? Um, retention, how do we get them to stick around? And then referrals is the last one. So referrals is the final R in the R pirate metrics, okay? So... That's all good. However, none of that is recurring revenue. Recurring revenue is when a client trusts you so much that they give you their credit card details and every month you swipe their card automatically and the money goes from their bank account through your credit card processor into your merchant account and into your bank account and you pay some fees along the way. That's called recurring revenue. We are all consumers of products that require us to pay on a recurring revenue subscription-based model. Think about all the software you use, okay? Our business is 100%, well, actually not 100%, 90% recurring revenue. The clients that we work with are all agency owners, web design, SEO, digital marketing agency owners. They are members of one of our programs. Our programs are built on recurring revenue. They pay us every month. We continue to work with them every month. Yes, we also have some courses on our website that people buy from time to time, but that is a very, very small part of our revenue. So 90% of our revenue is recurring revenue, which means I don't need to raise an invoice every month and the team doesn't need to send that invoice. Wendy, who works for us in our finance department in the Philippines, she doesn't need to raise an invoice and send that invoice to a client and then wait 30 days for them to pay. That's a bullshit business model. Stop doing it. It will kill you, right? Our business model is if you want to work with us, you give us your credit card details, we put it into Stripe, Stripe charges your card, and then it's set up on an automatic 30-day subscription. Every 30 days, we charge the card. I'm not sending you invoices and I'm not chasing you for payment, okay? We don't do that. That's not our business model. So the fastest way as an agency owner for you to grow your recurring revenue in the old days was care plans, right? It's particularly if you're in the web design industry and I, you know, take full responsibility for this in about 2011 or whatever it was, 2010 or whatever it was, I started talking about WordPress care plans because everyone was building WordPress websites and then handing it over to the client and then there was this expectation that, oh, well, there's a plugin that needs updating. Oh, well, shit, I better log in and update that for free. And uh, I started talking to all of my WordPress freelance friends all around the world and started teaching them how to build WordPress care plans. And, you know, I'm not going to say I invented the care plan market, but I have been told that by people who own these large outsourced white label WordPress care companies. I've had several of those people tell me, thank you for starting the whole care plan thing because we wouldn't have a business unless I was spruiking it. So anyway, it wasn't just me. There were a bunch of other people that were having the same conversation, but that was a big part of how web design agencies back a hundred years ago built recurring revenue. However, it takes a lot of clients on 100 bucks a month or 200 bucks a month to grow enough recurring revenue to have a sustainable business. And I don't want that many customers. So over the years, I then started adding things to the recurring revenue service. Back in the day, it was SEO plans. I started adding SEO. I had a team in India who were running all my SEO plans for me. I was marking it up and I was using agency analytics, which used to be called my SEO tool back in the day. And I was sending my clients a white label PDF report every week, showing them their Google analytics growth. And the team in India were doing all the work and it was pretty much automated. It was like hands off, it was making all this recurring revenue. It was like, this is the holy grail. And that worked really well for a while. So then of course I went in and I broke it because that's what I do when things are working well. Now over the years, I then grew uh, other skill set and figured out how to do other things. And then I packaged up what I called a growth plan. 
It's taken me a long time to actually start presenting this to other agencies. But what I've learned over the years, and I've been coaching agencies since 2012 or 2013, have mentored over 4,000 agencies through our products and programs. We now have a team of coaches here, obviously, and client success managers scattered around Australia, New Zealand, the US, Thailand, the UK, the Philippines. And one of the things that we're hearing from all of these agencies across the board is that the fastest way to grow recurring revenue is growth plans. A growth plan, let me break down what a growth plan is. A growth plan is typically sold for anywhere between two and a half to six to 10K a month, depending on the client and how much work you're doing for them. And a growth plan is different to a project or a retainer, right? I'll break down the terminology here and then I'll show you how to build a growth plan with AI. A growth plan, a project is a project, right? Hey, we need a rebrand. Uh, we need you to design a brand for us or we need to redesign our existing brand or we need you to rebuild a website or redesign a website, right? Or we need to launch this campaign. We've got a landing page. We need some ads. We need some content marketing. We need a bunch of video made, blah, blah, blah. They're projects, okay? They're typically larger scope things that we're going to bite off for a client and they might last three months like a three month project and it might be worth 30 grand to build a website or whatever it is, right? That's a project. It has a start and an end date, okay? And when it's done, it's done. Everyone knows it's done, you get paid and then you know you have no recurring revenue, you need to go find another project, right? It's dumb money. It's good money sometimes because it's a big injection of cash, but it's dumb money because it stops. And I don't like money that stops. Money is energy, money is designed to flow, my friends. So keep it flowing through the agency. Projects, getting paid for a project, doing the project, finishing the project, and going and looking for another project is stupid. You might still do that, but if you haven't got enough recurring revenue to break even on your recurring, then you're constantly on that treadmill of chasing the next project, and it's exhausting, okay? Now, retainers are time for money, basically. We'll pay you $3,000 a month, and you give us this many hours, and if we don't use those hours, well, what happens? Do they roll over? And how come your hourly rate's $200? I want your hourly rate to be $100. That means I get twice the number of hours for the $3,000 a month I'm paying you, right? Retainers in the old days is the only other way that service providers knew how to sell their stuff, okay? And retainers are problematic for all the reasons that we've spoken about. Don't sell retainers. And by the way, nobody wants to pay for a retainer these days. What am I gonna do? Just like pay you three grand to sit around and noodle and twiddle your thumbs and think. That's, there's no value in that. So growth plans, are the new version of a consulting retainer, if you like, with some implementation. And growth plans are the fastest way to grow your recurring revenue. As I said, they're typically sold from between sort of three to 10 grand a month. And a growth plan is literally a plan to help that you put together, I'll show you how to do it in a moment, a plan that you put together to help your client grow whatever part of the business they're trying to grow, all right? Let me know if, in the chat if this is working, if you can still hear me, if this is, uh, if you have any insights, comments, questions, let me know in the comments, right? If you have questions about this stuff or you have thoughts or opinions or you think I'm wrong, then tell me. I'm not, by the way, but that's okay. If you think I am wrong, you can argue with me. It's totally fine. As long as you're prepared to lose the argument, that's good, but I'm up for it, okay? So growth plan, thank you, David Leong. Growth plans are the fastest way to grow your recurring revenue, and it's a plan that you put together, a chronological plan of events and experiments and things that you're going to bite off and tackle for your client that are ultimately gonna help them achieve their goals. I'll give you an example of this in a moment. In fact, I'm gonna build one in real time, okay? What does a growth plan give your client? Well, a growth plan gives them a strategy and a plan and direction. And 95% of the businesses in the world don't have a plan, right? Just check this out. 98.5% of businesses in Australia, and the stats in America are very similar, and the UK and Canada and New Zealand, right? Very similar statistics. 98.5% of businesses in the Western world Never make it to $2 million a month, uh, a year, a month. Never make it to $2 million a year. Uh, that's the stats in Australia, be very similar in other parts of the world. 98.5% of businesses never make it to $2 million a year in revenue, right? 
Why is that? Well, I can tell you, because at one point we were there and now we're in the 2.5% that made it. The difference is they don't have a plan. They don't have a strategy. Under $2 million a year, you're just throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks. You're hacking your way to relevance, right? But once you get to $2 million a year, things change. Usually, your, your, your tax obligations change with the government. Your HR uh, obligations change with your staff, right? There's more compliance issues. There's a whole bunch of other bureaucratic stuff that comes into a business at that point, which means you can't just fly by the seat of your pants anymore. You need more people in the business to look after things like insurance and legal and all that kind of stuff, okay? And so in order to do that, you need more predictable revenue, you need more predictable growth, and you need more stability. And in order to do that, you need a plan, you need a strategy. That's what, so think about it, 98.5% of businesses never get there. Why? Because they don't have a strategy, they don't have a plan. They don't have a plan to get to $2 million a year, right? So most of your, most of your existing clients and most of the clients that you are talking to, most of the prospects that you're talking to to become new clients, they haven't got a fucking clue what they're doing. Right? If they did, they wouldn't be talking to you in the first place. They have no idea what they're doing. They're winging it, they're making it up, they're trying strategies, they're, they're, they're chucking shit at the wall to see what sticks. They don't have a long-term plan for the business. Right? Your job with the growth plan is to put that plan in front of them. Now, by the way, we've had a lot of questions recently about how growth plans work with paid discovery. It's a beautiful, beautiful match. Paid discovery, for those of you that have got the paid discovery method course, paid discovery, it's really simple. Paid discovery is, uh, and again, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds here because you've got the paid discovery method course, you'll know how to do this, but you basically sell a product called a digital roadmap, right, which is a paid discovery workshop. And during that workshop, you ask lots of questions. You don't give them any ideas. You just uh, think of yourself as a journalist. Right? Think of yourself as a journalist during paid discovery. Just go ask lots of questions, make lots of notes. Right? Then you come back after paid discovery and you present your findings. I'm going to show you in a minute how to do this. You present your findings and then you become the strategist. So paid discovery, you're a journalist. And then you come back after paid discovery, you present your findings, you become a strategist and you show them the plan. Hey, based on what we spoke about last week, in that digital roadmap workshop that we uh, hung out on Zoom for a couple of hours or we spent a full day in your boardroom and remember all the post-it notes we had on the wall, right? Well, based on all that stuff that we did in those exercises, we did in those very robust conversations we had about who your ICP is and what your service offering is and your profit margins and all that kind of stuff. Remember we talked about the 20% of stuff that you do in your business that drives 80% of the profit? Remember all those conversations we had? It was a great day, wasn't it? Yes, excellent. Well, based on all of that, We've put together a plan to help you achieve what you told us you want to achieve, right? I mean, this is basic consulting, okay? Here's the plan. So if we were to work together over the next 12 months to three years, here is what we would do, and we would probably do it in this order, okay? Now, if you watch the live stream that we did a couple of weeks ago with Sean Clark from Pacific IQ, not Sean Clark from High Level, Sean Clark from Pacific IQ, he actually shows you how he presents his growth plans visually in his pitch deck, right? He gets on a call with a client, he says, well, we can do this and we can do this and we can do this and we can do this. And here's how we're going to do it in this order. And he just shows them, right? It was an amazing, he's selling, you know, he's a, I don't know, He's, look, he's one of the bigger fish, right? He's a very professional agency serving clients who have big budgets, right? He's got this shit dialed in. He's been doing it a long time, works a lot with Shopify agencies, right? Go, he's a very smart cookie, right? He's also extremely good looking. So go and watch that live stream. He was very generous with his time. Go and watch that live stream with Sean Clark from Pacific IQ. Natalie Vlack can get you the details on that if you reach out to her. So that's essentially the, the, how paid discovery and growth plans work, right? Paid discovery, become the journalist, take all the notes, growth plan, presentation, become the strategist and show them the plan. Now what I want to do is I want to dive into ChatGPT, <clears throat> the old ChatGPT. We're going to dive into ChatGPT and show you, I hope this is the right screen. It is, look at that. And I'm going to show you how to build one of these suckers in real time, okay? Now, full transparency. I am not uh, an outstanding prompt engineer at all. In fact, I have no idea what I'm doing. 
with ChatGPT. I just talk to it as if it was, you know, a f relatively intelligent friend of mine that's quite worldly and been around the block a few times and I just ask it questions. And I did this yesterday, right, and so I'm just gonna come over here. I did this yesterday and uh, get out of the way here, Cam. I did this yesterday and I'm just gonna uh, copy and paste what I did yesterday, right? So yesterday was a very, very um, uh, bad prompt, right? And uh, so I'm gonna start again with a new chat Right? And now normally I talk to ChatGPT, I put the headphones in, I click the headphone icon, I've got the AirPods and I just walk around and I talk to it because I'm terrible on the keyboard. But for the purpose of this and the technical restrictions we've got, unfortunately you're gonna have to watch me type. So get ready. Um, you are a web design, SEO and online marketing expert and I need you to uh, give me some recommendations on how to improve the performance of a website for a client of mine. You are a web design SEO and online marketing expert and I need you to give me some recommendations on how to improve the performance of a website for a client of mine. I would like you, I should have put the timer on, I would like you to ask me um, in fact I'm not even going to do that, I'm going to keep this super lean, right? If I give you the URL for their website. Can you take a look? Here we go. I can't directly access URLs or browse specific websites. Really? That's not what happened yesterday. But I can certainly help you improve the performance of your client's website if you provide me the details about the website, such as its platform, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's very interesting because yesterday it actually just crawled the um, uh, here we go. I'll take a look at the website and provide. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna give it the website. Okay. Okay. Here is this is very interesting. This live stream just got very weird. Okay. Here is the website. And what I did is I put in our website just as a starting point, right? Agencymavericks.com. See what it does. Oh, look at that. Well, I can't directly visit the website. I can offer general advice based on best practices for optimizing a website like Agency Mavericks. Okay. So then what you would, okay, well, this is very weird because yesterday, let me just show you what happened yesterday, right? Uh, yes, if you provide me with the URL, I can review the website and offer some quick wins that can help improve its performance. I don't know why it's not accessing the website today, but here's what happened yesterday. I said this, to provide the most effective recommendations to improve Oh, I need a list of things I can improve for a client's website and online presence. I want you to ask me some clarifying questions before you make any recommendations, right? Then it asked me a bunch of questions. Now, by the way, if you've never run a paid discovery workshop, these are the types of questions. You could literally just take that, stick it into the workbook that we give you and the slide deck and ask these questions, right? In fact, if you're a ninja or a Jedi like me, you could just type the answers, you could just feed ChatGPT the answers during the workshop, right? What's the primary goal of the current website? Is it an e-commerce web? Now I'm talking to a client, I'm running a paid discovery workshop right now with a client. Is it an e-commerce website? Is it a lead gen website? What's the primary goal, right? And then you could literally answer these questions, give ChatGPT the answer to these questions while you are on the workshop, while you're running the workshop with the client, right? Then I said, if I give you a URL, can you put together some quick wins? Yes, if you provide me with the URL, I can review the website and offer some quick wins that could help improve its performance, user experience and online presence. Feel free to share the URL whenever you're ready. There it is. I'll take a look at the website and provide some quick wins for improvement. I'll just need a moment to review it. Here are some quick wins for improving the Agency Mavericks website. Now, quick wins, let me give you a, just a brief definition of a quick win. A quick win is usually something that we're gonna do for a client first. When I lay out a 12 months growth plan for a client, there are quick wins baked into the first two weeks, the first 30 days, the first 60 days, the first 90 days, because I want them to get the dopamine hit, I wanna hook them in, I wanna show them that I know what I'm doing, 
we get them quick wins, right? When we start working with agencies, when we start mentoring agencies, the first thing we do is try and improve, there's one of three numbers that we look at, their monthly recurring revenue as a percentage of total revenue, their gross profit margin and their net profit margin. I just want to improve one of those numbers really fast so within the first couple of weeks of working with us, they're like, holy shit, you guys are amazing. They go, great, now we're hooked, we're in, let's go, okay? So here's the quick wins. Improve load time, okay, there you go. So uh, clear call to actions. Now this is really interesting because I, I then went and had a look at our website and went, yep, you're right, we don't, some of our call to actions are clear, but there's too many and they're very confusing. We should just have one omnipresent call to action across the whole website, right? SEO optimization, yep, it's been a bit of a bugbear of ours. You know, we've done a pretty good job. Uh, it does bring in some, the, the reality is not many people are looking for an agency coach. So there's just, there's just hardly any search volume, right? Mobile usability, ensure all elements are fully responsive. Okay, so yep, we do have some mobile usability issue. Social proof, feature more testimonials on high traffic pages. This here, by the way, is one of the quick wins that I actually do for my clients. The first thing I do is look at Google Analytics for their high traffic pages and then have a look at how I can improve the conversion of the high traffic page. Why? Because that page is already getting traffic. What is the conversion for that high traffic page? What do we want people to do on that page? Opt in. Oh, okay, well let's look at the call to action. Let's make the value proposition for the opt in really strong and let's add some social proof to that page. Rather than just having a testimonials page on the website, let's add social proof wherever we want someone to take an action. And we usually want people to take action on high traffic pages. So when this came back yesterday, I was like, that's really good. That's, that's a, that there, feature more testimonials on high traffic pages is a real insight, not just on any page, but on high traffic pages, okay? These changes can help enhance the overall user experience and improve conversion rates. Great, can you give me another 12 ideas based on that website that I can improve for my client over the next 12 months? Now I'm asking it to write me a growth plan, okay? Don't know why it didn't crawl my URL uh, today. Uh, I'm seeing in the comments here, um, just tell it it can so and to do it, type in just do it or you must search site. Okay, there we go. Thank you very much from the Brains Trust here. Um, and uh, okay, here's the website, while well, I can't, okay. Um, just crawl the URL and give me the recommendations. Again, there we go. So uh, what we're learning is that it's not user error. Thank God for that. Whew! It's usually my fault, but that ChatGPT 4.0, meaning Omni, is still a little bit buggy. Just crawl the URL and give me the recommendations again. Okay, here's the website, there we go. I'll see what it says. I currently can't directly access or crawl websites. Oh, bullshit, you did it yesterday. Okay, anyway, so then I said, all right, give me another, give me another 12 ideas. Here are 12 additional improvement ideas. Check this out. Here are 12 additional improvement ideas for your client's website that can be implemented over the next 12 months, right? Content hub creation. Develop a dedicated content hub for blogs, case studies, and resources to boost SEO and provide value to visitors. Now, we do have a blog on our website. We do have podcast category pages. I, I've been following HubSpot for years, as you know, spent a shitload of money on their software too, which didn't turn out too well. But anyway, I think from a content marketing point of view, they really are the, uh, the gold standard. And they have content hubs. And their content hubs look like this. You have a one pillar page around a particular topic that is the absolute best piece of content you can produce. And on that page is an offer for a free resource. That offer for the free resource takes you either to a pop-up, opt-in, or a dedicated landing page for the free resource. HubSpot do this really well. Now to get traffic to that pillar page, they then produce a bunch of satellite pages about topics related to the pillar page. So they might go seven ways to blah, frequently ask questions about X, uh, you know, eight ways to use AI to do Z. And all of those blog posts link back to the pillar page as the masterpiece of content and then that leads to the lead magnet, right? They do this really well. This is not a small job to do this for a client. 
which is why I asked it the next question in a moment. Email list growth, implement lead magnets like free guides or templates to grow the email list and nurture leads. Enhanced video content, UX, UI enhancement, okay? Accessibility improvements, absolutely. Our website definitely needs that. A-B testing, I don't know whether it knows that we're doing A-B testing or not, it probably can't tell, but that's a good idea. CRO, local SEO, blah, 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 okay? Now, here's, here's the thing. You don't have to do all this stuff for your clients, okay? Here's the great thing about a growth plan. You don't need to do all this stuff for clients. The value in becoming a fractional digital strategist, which is really what a growth plan is, is a client's paying you to be their fractional digital strategist. And if you're charging, I'm just gonna throw out a number, if you're charging $4,000 a month to be a fractional digital strategist, that's costing the client 48 grand a year for you to come up with this plan and hold them accountable and make sure we get this done right? That's a third of the cost of hiring a full-time digital strategist as a full-time employee, right? Plus you've got cost of employment, 401k, superannuation, pensions, whatever it is, health insurance benefits, right? So it's 120 plus, plus, plus if you're hiring a full-time digital strategist in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the US, whatever, right? It's going to be around about that 120k plus, I'm talking US dollars here, okay? paying you 48 grand is a third of the cost or almost a third of the cost, right? A little bit more. And they get access to your network of other agencies and freelancers that you can bring in to help with implementation. They also get access to your brain and you get to see inside multiple businesses every month. If they hired a full-time digital strategist to work in-house, within three months, that person's operating in a silo they can't see what's happening in the real world. They don't have access to other businesses to see what's actually working. Whereas you as an agency owner, fractional digital strategist, you get to see the dashboards of multiple businesses every week. So you know what's working and you know what's not. So then I said, great, can you break each of these ideas down into a handful of action steps for each one? And ladies and gentlemen, here we go. So if I was to lay this out with a client, I would say, look, Based on what we learn in paid discovery, over the next 12 months, these are the kinds of things we would do. And then what I would do is I would put it into some kind of order to make sure there's quick wins up front and that the long-term stuff is spaced out over a period of, you know, three, six, nine months, right? First thing we're gonna do is identify the key topics relevant to your target audience so that we can start to build a content hub. Now, if they've told me in paid discovery that this is interesting to them, that they want to produce more content and that they believe in SEO, then during my recommendations, they're going to look at this and they're going to go, that's great. Content Hub, that's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah, this person knows what they're talking about, right? We're then going to develop a content calendar with regular blog posts, case studies and guides. Do you currently have a content calendar? No, sir. Would you like a content calendar? Yes, sir. Do you think this is a good idea? Yes, sir. Would you like our help implementing it? Of course, sir. Right? Develop a user-friendly content hub page with clear categorization. Just go and look at HubSpot as an example. Optimize each piece of content for SEO based on the content calendar that we're gonna produce, right? Email list growth. One of the other things we do is we grow your email list. Because what we know is that your email list is probably the most important asset that you can own in your business. Because once you've got someone's email, you're not then vulnerable to the algorithm changing, social media moving the goalposts, or, Google just, you know, turning your ad account off for whatever reason. So we're going to create a bunch of lead magnets, you know, ebook, checklist, blah, blah, blah. Integrate sign up forms prominently on your high traffic pages. That's the quickest win that you can have for a client, by the way, is to integrate opt in forms on high traffic pages with a relevant lead magnet. We can use AB testing to optimize the sign up form and the call to actions and then set up automated email sequences to nurture new subscribers. How does that all sound? That sounds amazing. When can we start? Right? Enhanced video content. Now, you might not be interested in enhanced video content or producing video or doing video and the client might not believe in video. So you know what? You just take that out, delete, right? I think you should look at it, but it doesn't mean you have to be a video production company, okay? Uh, UX, UI enhancements, right? Accessibility improvements. Go and talk to Mike Winter Theme if you need help with accessibility stuff. A-B testing, conversion rate optimization, local SEO, social media integration. Here's your, here's your growth plan. This is at least 12, 18 months, three years worth of work here, right? And by the way, if any of these start to work, like if the content hub starts to work and uh, if these two here start to work in the first three months and you can show them measurable progress, 
they're just going to keep doing this forever, right? This is how you write yourself three years worth of work, okay? I'm just coming back to the comments so I can see what you guys are talking about. Uh, can you share the link to that particular ChatGPT workspace? No, I can't, sorry, I don't even know how to do that. Toggle through the models where it says ChatGPT 4.0, oh, yes, okay. So anyway, you guys know how to do that. You know how to get ChatGPT 4 to crawl the web. And Now, some of this advice is gonna be generic, some of it is gonna be specific. The point is, Simon Kelly recently came to us with his prompt pack that we've included in paid discovery, in our paid discovery method, for prompting it and basically filling in the answers before you go and run a workshop with the client so that you've got the answers there and if the client gets stuck, you can continue to prompt them through the workshop and get the answers you need from them. Then come back, feed those answers into ChatGPT and have ChatGPT write a custom growth plan for your client. This is just one example. Obviously, if you were dealing with an e-commerce website and you, uh, you know, one of the things I do is I, here we go, I need a list of things I can improve for a client's website and online presence. I want you to ask me some clarifying questions before you make any recommendations, okay? These are the questions you need to ask during the workshop, plus the generic ones that we give you, like who's your ideal client and blah, 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 blah. So ask these questions, come back, give it the answers, and then it will write you a custom growth plan, which you can then go, well, you know, I, I, I guarantee it will come up with ideas you haven't thought about, and it will also come up with a whole bunch of ideas that you don't wanna do or that aren't relevant. That's totally fine, okay? It's not here to replace you, it's here to, to augment and enhance your current workflow and speed things up. Right, so questions, comments, thoughts about uh, growth plans. If you are not, Brooke McCarthy wants the Sean Clark interview, please, Natalie Black. Can you please get that to Brooke McCarthy? Uh, yes, the Sean Clark interview is here, it's in the group, it's a recording, right? Um, let me, what is your client's plan to grow their business? That's right. And so the, I think Anna mentioned here, when a client comes to you and says, we need you to run our ads. We need you to build a website. We need you to design a new logo for us. We need you to do SEO for us. We need you to build an email marketing template. The question that you ask is great. Can you send us a copy of your digital strategy so that we can see how this fits into everything to make sure that we get it right? Where's that digital strategy that we had done? Who, is it, have you got it? Is it in Google Drive? Where's the digital strategy that we had done? Right, they don't have one. If they had one and it was working, they wouldn't be talking to you in the first place, right? So, uh, I hope this has been helpful. Let me know in the chat, click on the three dots next to the workspace and go share. I don't know if I wanna do that. I'm not even sure I know what I'm doing here. Uh, so, yeah, I don't even know where the workspace is. <laughs> Uh, where is the workspace, Matt? I don't know. I'm not even sure what the workspace is here. But um, anyway, this is my workspace. And, and so uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, I don't know. Ping me, dude. Send me a message. Anyway, uh, so how are you using... Uh, now, by the way, once you've got the growth plan in place, right, uh, you can then... Uh, use AI to do a lot of the stuff in the growth plan. So we're using, you know, Surfer SEO to write articles. We're using um, learningstudio.ai to produce uh, online courses and quizzes. Uh, we're using a whole bunch of, you know, instant chapters to write chapters for YouTube channels. We're using a whole bunch of AI tools to make the implementation of this stuff super quick super fast, super profitable, but none of that matters if they don't have a plan. And your job as a fractional digital strategist is to come up with a plan for your client to help them achieve their goals and then keep them accountable and help them stay on track and work the plan. We have a saying here, plan the work, work the plan. That's your job as a fractional digital strategist. And think about it, the, the numbers are really simple. 28 clients at three grand a month, it's a million dollars a year in annual recurring revenue. 14 clients at six grand a month, it's a million dollars a year in annual recurring revenue. The magic number is $83,333 a month in recurring revenue, and that's a million dollars a year. It's 28 clients at three grand or 14 clients at six grand or somewhere in the middle, you know? 20, 
two and four and a half, or whatever it is, you can do the math, yeah? So uh, let me know in the chat, if you in the comments here, if you need any more information around this or how you're using AI. I hope you've found this helpful. Uh, go on, just use ChatGPT to come up with the questions that you ask in paid discovery and then feed those answers back into ChatGPT and let it write you a custom growth plan. It's just gonna save you a bunch of time. As I said, it's gonna do like 80% of the heavy lifting for you. You're still gonna need to, you know, don't just copy and paste it and show it to your client. That would be a fool, well, only a fool would do that. So you're gonna need to actually put some human eyes on this and tweak it, but it's certainly gonna give you a lot of inspiration and ideas that you haven't thought about. All right, I hope you found this helpful. My name's Troy Dean. We'll see you all again here next week in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. By the way, if you want to have a conversation with us about working with us to help you grow your agency, just reach out to Natalie. She can get you on a call with someone on the team to make sure you're a good fit. I promise you now, probably 85% of people watching this are not a good fit for us to work with. So we're not. it's not a high pressure sales call at all because you're probably not right for us and that's totally fine. We're happy to part ways as friends. But if you want to see if you're a good fit, uh, just have a chat with Natalie. We do have a guaranteed ROI. Uh, so if you do work with us, we guarantee you'll at least make your money back plus some. Uh, so you can't lose by having a quick chat with us. Reach out to Natalie if you want to explore that. All right, hope you have a great day. It's uh, super warm here. It's almost spring in Melbourne. So I'm going to go and enjoy some vitamin D before I record another episode of the Agency Hour podcast in 15 minutes with the wonderful Simon Kelly. All right, I'm Troy Dean. Let's get to work. <laughs>